All right, and we are back. This is Good Morning Kenya. Thank you for staying with us. Now, the segment on air right now is Women at the Forefront. And on this segment, we just try and um, bring you rather women that are doing great in the fields that they are in. Today is no different. I have with me a lovely looking lady by the name Evelyn Olo. Now, Evelyn Olo is the chair, Africa Cybersecurity and AI Foundation, and the CEO, Cyber School. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We're glad to have you on board. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, if we may begin by um, us defining uh, what AI is and what cybersecurity is as we get to jump onto this conversation. No, thank you very much. I mean, the word AI keeps, you know, being thrown around a lot, mm. uh, especially lately. And for most people, what we are familiar with is ChatGPT. You say AI, they think it's ChatGPT. But uh, AI is much broader than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, ChatGPT was the uh, first uh, LLM or large uh, language model to be human readable where you can just have conversations with it but mm -hmm. there's a whole lot of others that even came before ChatGPT that didn't have such a breakthrough as ChatGPT so mm -hmm. artificial intelligence really is about um, having a computer have the capacity to have a conversation with a human so the way you would have for example ask Google about something and then it will bring you searches and then you have to sort it out by yourself mm -hmm. and you have to sort of kind of you know uh, synthesize the information uh, using artificial intelligence now when you ask computer uh, a question then it will respond mm -hmm. you know as a human being would mm -hmm. so in very basic terms that is what artificial intelligence is is when computers have a conversation with human in human language mm -hmm. or in, in the way humans would and uh, I think that the earliest form of artificial intelligence is uh, when we had, uh, you, you know, you've seen the robots yeah. where you ask, uh, you put in a prompt for a robot to do something, carry this, turn left, turn mm. right. We actually this, have a, a, um, a robot um, waitress or wait, I don't know the gender <laughs> in the country at the moment. There's, yeah. a, there's a cafe that has a robot serving people. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually in places like uh, Singapore and Hong Kong and uh, uh, South Korea, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, artificial intelligence or robots that are actually even employed to do human jobs. So you're in sitting in an office, mm. but we're also working alongside artificial intelligence. Mm. Actually, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, there's an AI that actually um, took its own life uh, in the sense oh, of really? it, uh, it short circuit and then it went down the stairs until it couldn't work anymore so they're saying it actually committed suicide because it was overworked mm. so you see for such a, an ai it has surpassed the normal capacity because it also has empathy and you know it can feel stuff and it mm. can feel overwhelmed and stuff mm. like that and it knows what to do after that you've had people saying oh AI will become more intelligent than us and then it will be teaching itself stuff mm. that thing is already happening mm. where ai doesn't require you to put inputs in it, the more you use it, the more it becomes intelligent and the more it mimics human. So, very mm. interesting. So that's, that's what artificial intelligence is. Mm -hmm. And for cyber security, really, I mean, for, I mean, it, when you look at it from the very basic form of it, I mean, Safaricom for a very long time has been saying, don't show your password, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. So that's the very rudimental part of it. Mm -hmm. But cybersecurity is much wider than that. I know a lot of people ask, what, what does cybersecurity have to do with me? I mean, I don't share my pain. Mm -hmm. So why do I need to care about cybersecurity? Mm -hmm. I mean, cybersecurity is much wider than that. Even your grandma at home, if they have a phone that they actually go to WhatsApp on, yeah. That's that that right there is a cybersecurity risk because through your grandma's phone, somebody can actually escalate privileges and get to you. Mm -hmm. So cybersecurity really is about our safety while interacting with the digital space. Mm -hmm. I mean, whether you're just doing WhatsApp, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on you know Instagram, whether you're so watching TikToks. I mean. Nowadays, they just give their phones to the kids. We're watching YouTube. You see, yeah. somebody's in the supermarket or church or salon with a kid, and they're just watching YouTube. Uh, you don't know what 
comes, you know, as they're watching the YouTube, yeah. what pops up, what, what pops. are they clicking on, what is that showing them? Mm -hmm. uh, so that is all cybersecurity. A couple of years ago, uh, I think about two years ago, I wrote a book about a boy named Bola, mm -hmm. a 13 year old boy who through the mother's phone, uh, they logged into their Instagram, they met this person, they started having a relationship, it mm. escalated, they started, you know, sex sexting them, meaning uh, they shared some intimate photos and this mm. person started threatening to show it to their parents, to their schools, uh, if they don't do what, you know, they want them to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is also cybersecurity. So, you know, through the mother's phone, this boy got exposed and he did things that you know he never thought you know even the parents were not um, mm -hmm. uh, certain that this boy will do so cyber school is very wide so from your kids to your parents your grandparents to your co-workers I mean fishing you get an email from your co-worker mm -hmm. you click you expose your organization your procurement sends money to a wrong account it's just a whole lot of shebang right from your home so it's very wide mm -hmm. yes all right now before we get to um, talk about how a I maybe is coming in yeah. you know when it comes to cyber security yeah. um, you're the chairperson for yeah. the Africa cyber security and AI foundation kindly uh, let me in on what that is all about okay no thank you uh, so for Africa cyber security and AI foundation mm -hmm. we do work across Africa from Somalia to South Africa mm -hmm. with um, institutions of higher education with yes. governments mm -hmm. and with development partners on uh, programs uh, that drive policy, that drive consumer education, that drives um, awareness, and also that drives innovation in the space of cybersecurity and AI. Mm -hmm. So what this looks like is, for example, we have the top 100 women in cybersecurity, um, so top 100 women to watch in cybersecurity. For 2024, we are actually be hosting it in Kenya in September. 27th we did the nominations we closed them on International Women's Day mm -hmm. and uh, this specific uh, such an initiative like this uh, is to actually bring diversity into the field of cybersecurity and AI mm -hmm. because uh, uh, and f for example what informed this specific initiative is that um, you would find that even forward very forward-thinking organizations they have maybe only one person one woman in cyber security mm. and this is some of the most advanced institutions uh, even in tech mm. and this is not just Kenya this is uh, across Africa I work with the uh, international development organization where we do different projects multi-billion projects across Africa mm. and we could see this in various organizations and for me it got me wondering and thinking is it that women are not pursuing cyber security or is it that they are pursuing cyber security but they do not speak about it they are not known they are mm -hmm. not heard mm -hmm. so then um we set out to make a call to institutions and uh, uh, international organization, local organizations in IT and in cross sectors mm -hmm. uh, to nominate uh, any woman who they know or who works in the organization who's in cyber security. Mm -hmm. And we got nominations all the way from, you know, University of Samadhi in Somalia to Nelson Mandela University in South Africa, Unilag Nigeria, I mean, all across Africa. Mm -hmm. We were so shocked that there were so many women in cyber security. Mm -hmm. And so by celebrating and highlighting the successes of these women, including, you know, women doing very uh, uh, cutting edge research in cybersecurity tools. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you show young girls in university, in school rather, that this is a career that is viable mm -hmm. for them. And for me, this was important because when I spoke to parents about cybersecurity, they say, "No, you want my girl to be a hacker? That's a boy thing." Mm -hmm. And so our parents' and that's a misconception that people have about. Um, you know, cyber security yeah. when they think of you going in to that field, yeah. you know, as a career, yeah. all they think about is hackers. Yeah. So we've not done enough, you know, public sensitization. No, we've not done enough public sensitization. Mm -hmm. You find that actually a whole lot of our parents, even me, my folks, they still don't get it that cyber security is other Mm. is you know a lot of other things other than hacking mm. and uh, I, I have to keep 
having conversation, uh, you know, with parents and even with um, young people, you know, in university who are doing maybe BBIT or computer science and, the, you know, they're thinking about niching out in cybersecurity, probably specializing in that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and they ask, so what can I do in cybersecurity? I want to be a hacker. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so hacking is one, but then there's a whole lot of things. In cybersecurity, you have, we have white hackers, we have pen testers, we have cloud engineers, we have governors, you know, and risk people are looking at, you know, like ISO 27001, which is the latest for cybersecurity. So we, mm -hmm. we have, you can have a whole cybersecurity department that have different, you know, functions of cybersecurity. And even in hacking, we'll have the white, we'll have the blue, we'll have the red teaming. So you want to be a hacker, which type of hacker? So mm -hmm. there's just a whole lot of things in cybersecurity that even parents and the general population needs to know about mm. so that even as we bring in you know more women into cybersecurity a parent would know that there's a whole lot of areas they can go into they don't even have to touch mm. hacking some of us had to start in hacking mm. but I mean that 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 doesn't have to be the route um, that they have to go so for the Africa cybersecurity and their foundation that's those are some of the things we are doing mm. we also do uh, challenges like for now we are doing the uh, cybersecurity and their challenge. Yeah, where the one where you have a thousand entrepreneurs from across yes. Africa, two hundred of them being from y Kenya. Yes, exactly, oh. exactly, exactly. And this is important because. I mean, the AI conversation is passing us, mm. and like I said, we only know ChatGPT. Yeah. Most of us know ChatGPT as AI. You say AI, they say ChatGPT, mm -hmm. but there's a whole lot happening in that area, mm -hmm. and. Uh, our entrepreneurs are not taking advantage of that space. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've tried to generate an image on ChatGPT, mm -hmm. you know, like say African girl, 10 years old, brown eyes, mm -hmm. curly hair, or something like I've that. And then you see. The pictorial side of it. <laughs> yeah, j just go and explore and see. Yeah. The, the image that is generating for you, mm. which means that we've not had enough input into the language models to be representative of us. Mm. Uh, so, you know, we're encouraging a lot of entrepreneurs to go into um, AI and not just uh, the, 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 the consumer or human side of AI, but go into large language model harvesting. Mm and also creating the lang large language models themselves. And what we want to see like with the cybersecurity and AI challenge is see entrepreneurs coming up, doing various, you know, bits and bobs in terms of the hardcore AI. Mm -hmm. And what we'll do through the challenge is to consolidate this and have a stronger bargaining power to talk to the big AI giants like Nvidia, Intel, uh, you know, uh, Grok, which is uh, by Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. uh, Facebook is also getting into AI now. They have Meta.io. So, you know, have the bargaining power to go in and say, hey, this is uh, what you're bringing to you from Africa, mm -hmm. and we want you to make it commercially viable. Mm -hmm. So that when we do that, then they take up these entrepreneurs and they put it at the put them as part of their you know part of their ecosystem that is feeding into their models then now when we use these models we have more representation of us but what does that do to these entrepreneurs then it gives them an opportunity for their technology to be used but mm -hmm. also for them to earn revenue and even to have multi-million dollar enterprises coming out of Africa mm -hmm. so that is what we are looking at um, with the challenge mm -hmm. and we've had great applications coming in mm -hmm. I mean uh, you find mostly still about 80 percent is still you know oh, we are doing AI in health we are doing AI in education we're doing AI in agriculture which is very good which we actually commend mm -hmm. because uh, AI is cross-cutting just like cybersecurity is cross-cutting mm -hmm. because whether you're a lawyer whether you're a teacher you know, whether you're an accountant, it doesn't matter. Even when you're a pastor, mm. you need to know a bit about cybersecurity. You need to be throwing a bit of, you know, something here and there even when you're talking to your congregants. Mm -hmm. Because just the same way it, with religion, I mean, you've read the book a hundred times, uh, but every time, every Sunday, you go to church or you go to mosque, they tell you the same thing. 
you know, it's just that every day, every time it hits differently, right? And they interpret it differently. Mm -hmm. So cybersecurity is the same way. You wouldn't say, oh, I've had enough of passwords. Mm -hmm. Now I don't want you to, you know, tell me again that I need to have a strong password. I, you know, I have, I've had about MFA for a million times. I've had, don't share your password, don't do this. So you need to keep telling somebody Mm -hmm. so that it sticks in the head. Actually, uh, there's a book called Dalawara that, you know, recently launched where it's like a, uh, uh, an adventure of a boy called Rabala who is like in their village and uh, he's the cybersecurity champion. And so this community, you know, the way elders go to a baraza and they discuss issues of the community. Mm -hmm. This specific village called Dalawa, um, every time they go to baraza, they're told about strong passwords. They're told about, you know, if you see an email looking like this, it might be a phishing email, don't think on it. Right. Don't scan QR codes, you know, mm -hmm. randomly. Don't do this, don't do that. And in you know, in every time they go to Baraza, so it's like in school when you go to the parade and there's the national anthem, mm -hmm. uh, and you always sing the national anthem. This one, every time you go, uh, the national anthem is about cybersecurity. So it's about continuously telling people and telling people and telling people. And so um, that is why you find that um, cybersecurity is something that you have to keep on repeating, 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 repeating. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the some of the initiatives you're doing, and I think when we have time in my talk more about it, is about just putting that in front of people and always talking about it and always talking about it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's a really, really beautiful initiative, I mm -hmm. must say. Yeah. What are some of the most promising areas, you know, th um, that would make an impact in this particular field, specifically when it comes to um, AI? So areas that will have sig significant impact, like I say, for the challenge we're having, we've had about 80% uh, applications coming in mm -hmm. and people doing different things in AI, mm -hmm. uh, you know, AI in agriculture, AI in education, uh, AI in, I mean, in everything. Mm -hmm. So that would make significant impact, but I see where we would have the most impact as a region in terms of Africa is if we do, if we go more into hardcore AI mm -hmm. and have our input in the large language models. Mm -hmm. Because uh, if we have input in the large language models, then now all these other things that are layering AI on top of them, then they'll be able to, you know, tap APIs mm -hmm. from these large language models mm -hmm. because otherwise then we're just consuming um, whatever that has been inputted and does not represent us mm -hmm. very well. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of initiatives across Africa that governments are doing, um, including, uh, you know, in Nigeria, in South Africa, they're doing something also in Egypt where the government is working with entrepreneurs uh, to support and give incentives for, um, for, 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 enterprises and mm -hmm. startups to actually start building their own language models mm -hmm. and and mind that and uh, we're hoping in Kenya also uh, we'll see this um, you know uh, set off soon we are in talks with different development partners and also with our government partners t uh, government our partners to see how this is uh, you know this can can come through yeah. uh, I think that is where there that's where the most significant impact is going to be mm -hmm. and then the second one will be in education mm -hmm. uh, where um, you know even areas that have you know challenges in security uh, like far up north uh, you're able to uh, utilize AI to be able to have those kids study mm -hmm. um, you know even without having to go to classes and then the third one will be in health uh, because uh, through AI then you'll be able to detect you know, things like even breast cancer much earlier. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, the fourth one, the fourth one, which, you know, some people like to bring even before education is agriculture. Uh, but that one, for me, is down the road because there's still a lot we need to do before we are able to get to that. So AI is going to have significant impact across board. But for me, in terms of priorities, I see those playing the, the biggest role. All right. Yeah. There's the fear that AI is coming to take up our jobs. 
you know yeah. like it will it, it will lead to um loss of yeah. jobs massive yeah. loss of jobs what's yeah. your take on that that's true mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i always joke with my friends um, um, I always joke, mm -hmm. for example, when we have these evening meetings and we're having conversations, I see people hanging out and, 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 and stuff like this, and I'm saying, these people should be in class right now doing something on AI. Mm -hmm. Because let me tell you the truth. Uh, it's no longer that AI is coming. Mm -hmm. AI is already here. Now, the risk is, dear, if your boss is able to use AI to do your job, that is money saves. Mm. They don't have to pay you salary, they pay and all these other things that they need to pay, mm -hmm. right? So we are working on initiatives across Africa for upskilling and reskilling. We're also doing something with the Kenya School of Government to see how we can do that for the public sector. Mm -hmm. If you do not prep yourself to use AI as your ally and AI is a tool in such a way that actually you are the go-to for your boss mm -hmm. to know what's happening in AI mm -hmm. so you can actually come and say oh and I discovered this and it can do this and it can help me do this better it can help me do this and it can help me do this so you are the one who's supposed to be telling your boss that mm -hmm. instead of your boss finding out these tools that has, can do your job even better than you mm -hmm. so when you become uh, you, when you become a facilitator and when you become um, uh, that team member who is at the forefront of AI and who is using AI to 10x your output mm -hmm. and to streamline your processes and your operations, then that way AI cannot replace you. Mm -hmm. But if your boss is to find out AI that can do your job, then definitely AI is going to make you redundant. And this cuts across, you know, whether it's in media, whether it's in finance, whether it's in uh, law, whether it's in what. Because, I mean, I can go in and say, oh, um, draft me an agreement between blah, 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 these are the details, blah, 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 blah. You and it will. It. Yeah. yeah. And not just ChatGPT. Right now, so like I say, ChatGPT is what everybody knows. Mm -hmm. But there are over 50 industry-specific AI that have been specifically created to mm -hmm. do that job. Mm -hmm. Like the specific AI for accounting, mm -hmm. the specific AI for medicine. Mm -hmm. It diagnoses um, you know, conditions even better than a dog. Yep. And you can even take your test results, scan it, upload it, it will give you, and it will even give you case studies. I mean, even if it's for, for law, I uh, remember this guy who never, you know, passed the bar and, you know, was mm -hmm. winning cases. Yeah. yeah, now, imagine now that guy, and then he, ha he's, he you know, he's, he, he has a hold of an AI tool that now can give him cases from even 1800s that he can actually, you know, uh, refer to. Mm -hmm. That, that guy is now supercharged. Yeah. So my address is always upskill, upskill, reskill, learn, relearn, okay. and use AI as your ally because for sure a hundred percent, and it's not in the next three or four or five years, mm -hmm. in the next year or two years, AI, you know, you'll just hear, okay, no, I think uh, I now you have about three months. Uh, after that, we are doing restructuring, mm. blah, blah, blah. No, yeah. AI can do your job better. We don't need you. So my advice is to upskill, upskill, upskill. And at a cyber school, we have um, various uh, certification programs. All right, uh, let's take a break, and then okay. when we come back, we get onto that. Okay, yeah, thank okay. you. Let's break for a moment. All right, and we are back. In case you're just joining the program right now, my guest uh, on the show today is Evelyn Olo. She is the chair, um, Africa Cybersecurity and AI Foundation, and also the CEO Cyber School. We're talking about women in AI and cybersecurity, and just generally, um, not we're just basing it on AI and cybersecurity. That is. Uh, before mm. we took that break, you were yeah. talking to me about some certifications yeah. that you um, offer. Yeah. You know, the cyber certifications. Yes, 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 yes. So uh, a cyber school, not cyber school, it's mm. a cyber So It's supposed to be Africa Cyber School, okay. so we just call it a cyber, a cyber school. school. Okay. Uh, we 
work with industry uh, experts um, from InfoSec Institute in the US mm -hmm. and uh, University of, um, of Capital uh, in Washington to offer certification courses uh, on cybersecurity and on AI. And these are role-based certification. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, info and stuff out there about oh you want to get into cyber security this is where you're supposed to start this is what you're supposed to do so there's information overload if uh, right now if you go and google uh, i want to get into cyber security or how to get into cyber security there's just so much information you don't know where to start some will tell you you need to first know how to code python mm. some will say you need to have javascript say a plus plus some will tell you oh you need to do this but the best place to start is to say, I want to get into cybersecurity. Probably I have, you know, some engineering background or some coding background, or I don't have, mm. you know, I'm in marketing or I'm in finance. How do I get into cybersecurity? The best place to start is what do I want to do in cybersecurity? Mm -hmm. Like I told you, there's different roles in cybersecurity, right? Mm. Like I said, there's pen testing, there's cloud engineering, cloud security, there's governance and risk, there's, you know, there's a white hurricane, there's just a whole lot of things. So first you go and check, what can I do in cybersecurity? You can go into AI and say, right now, uh, I'm a media personality, I do journalism, I do uh, interview people mm -hmm. for a living, mm -hmm. uh, I love talking to people, I love traveling, uh, I love doing this or I love doing that. Uh, if I want to get into cyber security, where can I start? And that's the good thing about AI, mm -hmm. uh, because unlike Google, where you just go and say, or oh, how to get into cybersecurity, uh, for AI, you would have a conversation with it. Actually, we, we have, uh, uh, you know, programs we run on uh, prompt engineering. Those are some of the cyber, uh, AI, rather, AI courses that we do, prompt mm -hmm. engineering. Mm -hmm. So how do you get... AI to give you the response that is appropriate. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's just a by the way. Mm -hmm. So then you will know how to ask AI to tell you where to start in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. So you tell it to tell you what will suit you best in cybersecurity based on what you're currently doing mm -hmm. and what your interests are. Mm -hmm. So once you know what you need, to, what you want to do in cybersecurity, or what you know you're cut out to do based on what you're doing currently then you'll come to a cyber school on our website so it has cyber security for for lawyers cyber security for accountants cyber security for marketers cyber security mm. so you would go on a certification based on what you want to do in cyber security mm -hmm. and then f they start between four to six months mm -hmm. uh, for the certification courses and um, it's purely online but then we have the virtual labs, uh, then we have uh, physical seminars, mm -hmm. uh, and for the virtual labs, you can, um, you know, do from wherever you are, but we encourage people to also come to our hubs. We have physical hubs at uh, uh, University of Nairobi Chiromo campus. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just uh, concluded an MOU with the Strathmore University also we are building a physical lab there uh, for regulators or people already in the workforce the physical lab uh, that we have is at Afralti which is next to communication authority we are mm -hmm. actually housed by communication authority mm -hmm. uh, through the foundation because uh, it's Africa wide so um, the certifications then give you the, the stamp of approval that hey I know what I'm doing or, or hey um, I can do this because for and I tell people this all the time for us like cybersecurity or computer engineering mm -hmm. uh, it's becoming increasingly um, impossible to com compete with academics like oh I have a degree or I have a master's mm -hmm. I mean if you apply for a job at Microsoft or Google Ireland or you know or or any um, startup or tech giant they don't care that you have a master's or you have a bachelor's or you have these no they only care that you've done personal projects mm -hmm. and they care that you have certification mm -hmm. because for example a CopTIA certification or a science certification um, 
you know, it shows that you've done the same test and you've passed the same test as a kid in uh, Singapore, a kid in Kuala Lumpur, a kid in mm. Silicon Valley. So that's why the certifications are actually very important mm. because I show up for an interview and I have certifications, same as you. You come from New York, somebody else come from Sydney. Yeah. We have the same certification. It means we went through the same processes. Mm -hmm. So then that gives us a leg up. So that such certifications is what we do for a cyber school. Mm -hmm. um, for cyber security and for AI as well. So also for AI, you you know you you're able to go and say, oh, um, I am uh, you know I am a barista at our cafe or whatever, and you know I, I hear AI is coming from my job. How can I prepare myself uh, so that AI does not replace me? Mm -hmm. And you know then the, you know the model will tell you, oh, you need to do this, this, this. Then you'll come to, you know, you'll go to our website and then you'll find the various courses mm -hmm. uh, that are aligned to the different roles and you're able to do that. And then once you do that, then you're equipped, you know, you, you know you're able to actually withstand uh, the airwave that is coming to sweep us. Yeah. 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 I love that you said the airwave that is coming to sweep us because yeah. it's really coming, it's yeah. coming at us so fast. Yes. You know, um, how is AI used particularly in cyber security? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At I'm, the moment. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Have you ever received a phishing email? Yeah. How was it like? Well, it just, it's, it's, it's uh, formed in a way that is very, very attractive. Like you really want to just click on it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, this is what AI is, is going to do in cybersecurity because in cybersecurity, AI is both to our disadvantage mm -hmm. and also to our advantage. Mm -hmm. Now, for example, that phishing email, mm -hmm. before it was being written by humans, so I had to sit down and think about it. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, you, you're aware about the 411 scams, Nigeria, and the prince, you know, I have a 2 million, yeah. I need you to send me 1,000 mm -hmm. so that I can unlock the 2 million, right? Mm -hmm. So those were being written by humans. You know, since time in Marmora, I think phone ones come started, you know, back in the 50s, mm -hmm. you know, when it was still by mail and then it came online and then they could do these things through computer. That's why they're called Yahoo Boys because, y you know, they had to do it through Yahoo. Mm -hmm. But these were drafted by humans. Now, with AI, if you go to the dark web, they sell phishing as a service. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. And they were selling phishing as a service before AI, where mm -hmm. you would go and they will sell you a pack. So for example, you go and say, uh, I want to get into love scamming, you know, I want to get people to send me money, you know, because they're in love with me and mm -hmm. stuff. Then they will sell you a pack, mm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then those things are so well scripted that you can, if you go and follow it step by step, then actually you become a pro, right? Mm. Now with AI, they will not only sell you a pack, but they'll also sell you a tool that will keep generating and generating based on different contexts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now, um, even for phishing emails for organizations, now you don't have to go and craft it yourself. Mm -hmm. There's AI tools that just the way I was telling you, you go to AI and say, oh, I want to do this, this, this. Now there's AI tools you say, oh, I want to send Evelyn a phishing email mm -hmm. about, so she appeared on KBC. She said they are doing this and this and this and this challenge. Mm -hmm. I want to send an email as an investor or as a foundation that is funding cybersecurity courses across Africa. I want to tell her that we will give them a million dollars. I want to, so you go and actually mm -hmm. tell it specifically mm -hmm. and it will churn for you a phishing email that you could never even think of. You can even say, oh, Eva seems to be interested in one, two, three, four, five things. You know, th this is where she works. These are the things she does. Mm -hmm. What language would you think she'll be, uh, you know, receptive to? Mm -hmm. And then the tool will actually specify in such a way that when I look at it, I'd be like, 
Yeah. Damn, this person knows me. Click. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So that is what AI does. Mm -hmm. And in cases like even ransomware or even DDoS attacks, now we have bots that before for you to do something like a DDoS attack, mm -hmm. you'd have to have a legion of, of hackers throwing traffic uh, to a network at the same time mm -hmm. for you to even take down a website. Now with AI, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. It's bots. So you can just charge up, I don't know, 10 thousand bots, a hundred thousand bots to send attack to to a specific site or platform that you want to take down before it will take you a couple of hours before you can take that site down. Right now mm -hmm. you can actually take so down a site within in two, three minutes. So it means whatever attackers could do, it ten times their mm -hmm. capabilities. Mm -hmm. Now for us as researchers and as cybersecurity experts, what you're able to do through AI is that the same way they're able to create their attack vectors or 10x their, uh, their, their attack capabilities, AI, we're also able to 10x our response with AI. Mm -hmm. So the same way you'll be able to send 100,000 bots to a website to take it down in two minutes, mm -hmm. we're also able to use the same AI to bring it down, to bring it back up mm. within the same. So it's 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 more of like a World War Three out there. It's just that you're not able to see it. Mm -hmm. But right now the wars we have are going. You know, they're they're going to cyber. I mean, in, you know, if we ever have like a World War Three, it wouldn't be physical really. Mm -hmm. It would be cyber wars because. You know, uh, attackers are not sleeping. They are continuously developing their AI. They're continuously developing uh, their cybersecurity um, uh, attack tools. And for us, on the other end, mm -hmm. we are also not sleeping. We are also developing counter. But as usual, I mean, um, you know, you you find that there's always at one point is like uh, it's like Bitcoin really where you know it's always up it's always down there are people for it there are people against it but you know the market forces actually you know drives it mm -hmm. so for us also in terms of AI and cyber security the market drives it but right now it's impossible to talk about cyber security without talking about AI because I mean, just the way cybersecurity, uh, AI is powering everything in our lives, mm -hmm. AI is powering cybersecurity, and the game is now looking very different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it is looking very different. Mm -hmm. I, I have to agree with you on that because there's the um, issue of impersonation. There's, oh. I don't know if you were able to see, there's a clip that I saw of a certain um, um, media personality, yeah. actually. Yeah. You know, it had been developed to look like it was exactly her speaking about this product and she wasn't in any affiliation with that particular product but mm -hmm. it seemed like she was urging people like she yeah. was doing she was influencing for that product yeah. but it wasn't her yeah. so it was all ai generated yeah. whereby she's the we can see this is this is her yeah. you know yeah. this is her voice exactly yeah. how yeah. she sounds yeah so i mean how do we stay alert <laughs> No, it's glad actually that you mentioned that. Yeah. I mean, the, the issue of uh, AI is actually very wide. It needs a week for us to even, you know, start scratching the surface. This mm. is the year of elections globally. Mm. I mean, uh, we just, you know, smack in the middle right now. But we've had so many elections already, mm -hmm. and we have very many significant elections coming up, including um, the US. Yeah. And uh, AI has played a significant role, live alone even now for pers media personalities. Mm -hmm. AI has played very significant role. Uh, I don't know if you you know saw where uh, President Biden was talking to some constituents and tell them you know vote for this or mm -hmm. vote for that and it was a video and you know it was him and that was AI generated. Mm -hmm. I mean even in South Africa during the you know very much contested elections uh, you find opponents were using AI to ge yeah. generate you know media for misinformation and you know and right now also with AI, you can just say, no, that was not me, that was AI, mm. you see. Mm. So there's a whole lot of uh, research going into even being able to have uh, digital um, uh, tags uh, for identities like yourself, like myself, mm -hmm. so that when I go online, even when I'm talking to um, my folks or my colleagues, even on Teams or Zoom, there's, there's supposed to be a digital identification that actually
actually shows that that is actually you sure. in the call. Mm. Because right now with AI, I can actually talk to you even on FaceTime and you actually call and it's actually me and I'm actually talking to you and I'm telling you, oh, this, this, that. And then, you know, you re later realize that it's actually, it was not me. Mm. You know, even on WhatsApp call, but this was you, this is your number, Eva. We actually video called. Mm. I said, no, but that was not me. So, That's uh, so scary. I'm telling you, it's, yeah. scary. it's, it's even crazy. I don't is want it to just to do scary. more harm than good? That's, that's a very interesting question. Um, yeah. I think some harm might come before good, yeah. but definitely uh, down the road it's actually coming for good. But it's actually very, very scary. We haven't seen even half of it. The, the book I told you about the 13-year-old boy mm -hmm. that I, I wrote about two years ago, the person they were chatting with or talking with, even videoing with online, was actually an AI bot. Mm. The people who are behind it are sex, uh, uh, sexual predators. It's a syndicate mm. being run globally. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually something that was being handled by Interpol. Mm -hmm. But this was a kid actually video chatting with another 13-year-old girl, but it's a bot. Mm -hmm. Right? So you, you can imagine even the friends that your kids are having uh, on social media, some of them are real, some of them are bots, they can video call, they can voice call, they can see them. So it's actually becoming very tricky, even in the issue of influencers, like right now, if you if you are um, an, an organization, you want to move a product or something like this, you pay an influencer to be able to move that product for you. Right now, you can actually just have a clone of that influencer move that product for you. Mm -hmm. And so you see even in terms of job security, when we were saying AI is coming for your job, AI is not just coming for office job. Mm -hmm. AI is coming for the influencers we know mm -hmm. in this world, you know. Um, and so it's, it's a very interesting field. So there will be, there's a lot of good that's coming from it, mm -hmm. but also we'll have to see a lot of damages before that. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, now, uh, we need to wind up on this conversation. And yeah. as we do, I want you to speak to a young lady who's watching you right now yeah. and would love to pursue a career in that field, <laughs> just in, in very few words. Uh, so, shall I look at you? No, look at the camera. <laughs> this is your camera. OK. Um, when I talk to parents, because uh, I'm a parent myself, what I always say is, if you are doing anything uh, in high school or in university or in college, whether you're doing medicine, whether you're doing finance, commerce, you know, anything you're doing, make sure that you actually niche out in cybersecurity or in AI, because in any field that you're in, in the next few years, it's not going to matter. You have to have skin on the game when it comes to AI, and you have to have skin on the game when it comes to cybersecurity. So if you're in university, if you're in high school thinking about what you're gonna do in uni or in college, consider cybersecurity, consider AI, the Africa Cybersecurity and AI Foundation has a membership open uh, where you can go and uh, sign up to be a member. It's free of charge and you'll get to, you know, be part of the community where you know what is happening latest in AI, what is happening uh, in cybersecurity, how can you be part of the conversation, how can you be part of the community, how can you start a business in this field and how can you make yourself relevant even in your future job. So I encourage every girl uh, to pursue some Thing in this field and uh, yeah we're just getting started and right. on 27th of September come for the awards uh, ceremony uh, for the um, top 100 cyber security women to watch in Africa and you know learn how to they got to get into cyber security and how you can too all right yeah. thank you so much yeah. for gracing us with your presence mm -hmm. really enjoyed this conversation that was Evelyn Olo she is the chairperson Africa cyber security and AI Foundation and also the CEO of a cyber a cyber school um, I'm, I'm sure that you've gotten to learn a thing or two now this is where we end good morning Kenya but as I leave I want to leave you with a feature on AI do enjoy and and enjoy the rest of your viewing goodbye